Yeah, and it's, it's like, oh my god, it's so important. It's always hard to describe why it's so important. Form. Do I have to fill something out? No. Oh, I was thinking form like <laughs> form. <laughs> yeah. Um. I didn't get it. <laughs> is that a tad joke? I think it, it is. It is now. <laughs> um, that's good. <laughs> you impress me. Jack, I don't even know what to say. You're like, hot and smart. Jack, no, I'm so serious. Hot. That was really smart. Baby, what are you... Well, hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and my husband Jack and I taking a little coffee break and chatting about the seven key elements of really great interior design. We thought it'd be really fun to share these key elements so that as you're designing your spaces, they're the things that you really need and, and those core things that are really gonna take your space from being to wow. <laughs> so we hope that sounds like fun to you. We hope you'll hit subscribe and give the video a thumbs up and let us know down in the comments which of these you are guilty of forgetting about and which one of these is kind of your favorite that you're just like, oh, that's always my favorite one to think about. Oh, I know which one is my favorite. Can I share it yet? No, no, you have to wait. You have to share at the end. I'll share at the end. Okay, let's jump in. The first key element in design is color. It's the one that we always start with. We always, always, always start with color with ourselves and with our clients. Color is so important because it really is, for us, it's the most important element. Yeah. It really is the foundation, that foundational building block to the entire space. You can't even start thinking about what you want to buy until you know what color you should even be buying it in. I, color yeah. dictates everything. everything. It's really important because color not only dictates what you want to buy, but it also dictates how you want to feel in the space. And that's how you will know what to even start with. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, it's like, oh my God, it's so important. It's always hard to describe why it's so important. And it's more than paint. Yes. That's what everyone wants to talk about is what color should I paint in the room? But color palette's more than paint. Definitely, definitely. This is your color palette is your fabrics, it's your rugs, it's your hard surfaces, it's your wood tones, it's your paint, it's everything. It's the light that comes into the windows. It's everything. This yeah. is such a key element. So if you think about your colors, you may want to think about maybe a blue palette. You may want to think about a brown based palette. Are you going to have a lot of contrast? Mm -hmm. Are you going to have navy and white paired together? Or are you going to do navy and cream? Are you going to do navy and black, which you guys know is one of I my favorite that. combinations. Yeah. I love those sort of like just off tone on tones. I think that the color is really important and it will really be that element that drives everything else that you do, which is why for us, when we design for ourselves and for our clients, this is always where we start. Yeah. And a lot of times if you already have maybe one key element for your space, which is really normal, maybe somebody goes out and they buy a sectional and, or they went out and bought a dining table and chairs. That color is gonna be where I will usually start if that's a piece that they're asking us to please incorporate into it. Or maybe they just did their kitchen and there's a kitchen cabinet color and yeah. I'm gonna make sure that, that color is somehow reflected into the rooms probably throughout the house. I, I want it to feel cohesive. So color is everything and I think you should have a lot of fun picking out the colors and putting them together. You can do it on Pinterest. You could create a little board for yourself with just some colors. It doesn't even have to be what you're looking for. It's just what is in that color. So a lot of times our mood boards will have food in them. They'll have a, maybe a room or a street scene or a cup of coffee. And we'll pull together these mood boards that have all yeah. these colors in them. And if you guys want to see a great example of this, go over to houseofvalentina.com. It'll be a pop-up where you can actually see our 2022 color palette of the year. Oh. And it has our color palettes along <laughs> with the inspirational photos. That way you can see that's what we start with on every single project is something just like that. Did you plan that? Did you know? No, that? I just thought about it because I thought <laughs> people are going to say, what do I include? I'm yeah. like, well, we have an example you can download right now okay. for free. So well, there perfect. you go. Go to houseofvalentina.com. Yeah. Okay. Next up we have form. And before you're like form, what does that mean? Form? Do I have to fill something out? No. Oh, I was thinking form like <laughs> form. <laughs> yeah. Or that too. Yeah. But form really is super, super essential to interior design. Form is all about the shape of things. Form of so many rooms has been changing lately. And what you're starting to see is that 
there's a lot more rounded shapes and there's just a sort of softness to the edges of things. We've been talking about that a lot on the channel, but the form of things is also really important because it really does yeah. shape this sort of essence and the feeling of a space. So if you have a, a big, sectional right in the middle of the room, you may want to think about softening that with a round table. And so these these shapes and the forms of things really become key elements to yeah. creating something that feels alive and it's moving. You don't want to have an entire room of all angles and everything's so perfectly aligned, or, or maybe you do, that's what you really like. But that's what I like to think about is how shapes of things interact with each other and making sure that because a lot of times you're gonna hear mix the textures, right? Like we say that oh, in like every time. video. All the time. Mix the textures, but you should mix your shapes as well. Mix the the form of the different things that you're using. Hmm. So a round coffee table is gonna help feel a little bit like you'll have a little bit more flow. Same for a round vase instead of one that is square, or you can use a square to create structure. And that's where the real fun can be is exploring what really jumps out at you and how to use that in your space. Okay, next up is light. And that's always your favorite because I'm obsessed with the natural light. I, for me, every design that I ever do, it's always about the natural light. Yeah. And I am, I'm definitely guilty of thinking about the room like in the evening. That's always like my last thought. I, I always think about it. I don't forget it. But for me, the natural light, that's how I design a space. I, I really design the space based off of the natural light. And then your favorite part is lining the room for the evening and yeah. having the gadgety things where you can turn them on and dim them. And I just, I love that we kind of balance each other in that way. Well, I think a lot of people, that's what they don't think through. And yeah. so when you do walk in at night, it just doesn't feel right. But if you think about, you know, think about the one space we've all been in, which is hotels, right? Hotels always have multiple layers of light in every single space. Yeah. I was in a, in a room this week traveling and there's low light, medium height, high height. And what it does is it, it just, first of all, it fills in the room because a room that's darkly lit is like at night, it can be really darkly, cozy. I don't think darkly is a word. Darkly lit. Dimly. Dimly lit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little dark. Um, get it instead of dim? I'm a little dim. Um, I didn't get it. <laughs> is that a dad joke? <laughs> I think it, it is. is now. Um. <laughs> but it is fun to really explore your own style and you may want a lot more light, but you might not. And that's where the fun comes is being able to dim your lights, candlelight and daylight and all the different ways that you light your room are absolutely so much fun. key elements to your design for sure and fun. Yeah. Little hint, that was my favorite. Oh, is that your favorite? Yeah, oh. totally. Okay. Yeah, that probably was your favorite. <laughs> the next element is the lines of your space. Lines are really important in your space. And when you think about lines, we're not just talking about drawing a line on the floor, but we're talking about your sight lines. That's something that we were literally just talking about this in one of the houses that we were looking at yesterday. When you walk in the door, your sight line is immediately to something that isn't pretty. And so even while we were walking oh, the yeah. house, they hadn't even bought it yet, but we were talking about how will we break the sight line so that that's not the first thing that you see or we wanna take it beyond that thing? And how do we manage the furniture placement so that you have something that's blocking this site and encouraging that other bit? Sight lines are also really important to the, lines are also important the way you move about a space. A lot of times when you have, like for us, we have a center room and it's literally the furniture is kind of an island in the center because there is a line on all the way around that leading to another space. Yeah. So basically part of our room is hallways, right? It's, the, it's basically a big hallway so with hallway like a little living room in the, in the center. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to think about the sight lines of the hallway as you come out of the doorway and what you see. Then when you turn back to the kitchen, yeah. what's the sight line that we're going to be looking at? you think you have to think about all the different lines that are in the space not don't think so much as like is that lined up it is about that because you want to make sure that you've created walkways that you've created sort of natural ways of moving about the space but it's also the way that it feels and that comes down to do i have enough space here to actually walk and 
I don't know. It, and what does the house look like across? This is one of the things I've noticed from our bedroom when we first walk out, is you see the full living room, but you also see all the way across to your office. Yes. And if any of those things were not in alignment with each other, if suddenly the office was some crazy radically different style, it's, it would throw you off, but instead when you look across, it's just like, it's like poetry. It's like, oh, it's so beautiful to look across. Yeah, and, and we very purposefully kept that furniture low because then when we had to hire furniture in there, it sort of blocked your sight line. And so it's, it is actually yeah. that, that you do want to think about how you look through your space, how when you're sitting, the room feels, how you're walking through it. Yeah. All those different lines are really essential to a great design and really just feeling like things just sort of came together. It just it feels right. Yeah. And that's why the lines are really, really important. That's a really good statement. What? That the lines are why it, it make it make sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really is. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you impress me. Jack, I don't even know what to say. You're like, hot you... and smart. Jack. No, I'm so serious. Old. That was really smart. Baby, what do you... Th but baby, that's what I do all day. I know, but just the way you expressed it just then was just like, that's why... It, it makes sense because when you walk into a room that you've done, you don't feel like you have to, uh, oh, that stupid table's in the way. Like you, yeah. it, the flow works. It, it is there's really. There's a natural human flow to it. Yeah. That you're like, I should walk this way and look, there's nothing in my way. I don't Maybe. know why I never connected those two. What are you talking about? No, I never connected the line to why stuff just flows the way it does. You didn't realize that I was doing all that on purpose? No, you make it look so <laughs> effortless and so easy. But it's always about how you read a room. Yeah. And that you, without having somebody put down directions on the floor, you know how you're supposed to move around it. Oh my God, that's yeah. amazing. And you know what, I always set things further, like I think about something beyond. Like our fireplace is here and then there's a picture behind it because I want you to think there's something beyond this that I wanna go see. It's all so about the cool. lines of the room and the way that your eye is gonna read it. Let's just drop the mic for a minute. I'm serious, that is like so profound. <laughs> no, pause. we're gonna keep going. No, let's we're take gonna... a minute to no. ourselves. No, we're not gonna take a minute to ourselves. <laughs> the next one is purpose. And this is a an absolute essential to design. It's really where I start. And a lot of times people will say, oh, you know, you, get, you have to give up the function for beauty or, yeah. You're supposed to talk about function first. It, it's almost like, I don't know, like it's kind of negative the way I hear people talk about it, but actually it's really important because the purpose of a room, a room can have more than one purpose and it can have a, it can have purposes for different days. It can have purposes for different events. It can have purposes for different phases of your life. So when you think about purpose, think about how you're going to use that space on a daily basis, how you're gonna use that space when you have people over, how many people are gonna come over, how many seats do you need? This is really important. It's it's a key essential to, it's, it's absolutely fundamental to the space. It's yeah. really, it should've been number one because how can you do anything until you know even before you get to the colors, what what do you even want to do with the room? What what do you how do you want to use it, right? Yeah. So when you think about that desired result, the life that you're living in the space, how many people are gonna be sitting on a Sunday morning? Well, if it's just the two of us, we're probably not gonna be using all the sofas and chairs that we have in our space, but I'm gonna need the sofas for when my family, the you know, the big the big Greek family comes over and everybody's crowded around and everyone's yeah. sitting on the arm of the chair and I think about all those things. I think well, about- the cocktail tables. Like mm -hmm. we brought cocktail tables in because we knew we wanted people to have places to sit their coffee or their yeah. cocktail or whatever it is. It's all of that together. It is, it is. So it's it's fundamental for you to think about the purpose of your space. It's, it's absolutely essential. And I think you should allow yourself to daydream. It Allow yourself to think about how this room might be functioning for this now and it has a purpose that's for here today and maybe it won't do that purpose a couple years from now, and how can you transition things? How do you need to buy things? Think about all of that. Think about short-term, long-term, like the everyday and then the special occasions, and that should really help you make sure that you design your space just the way that you'll need it. Next up, we have the mix. And that's just my own little term because I think a lot of times we just get honed in on one thing and we just forget that we need to mix things up. We need to shake it up a little bit. 
You can play with contrast with colors. You can also play with contrast with textures. Yeah. I think that it's a blast. It really is, at least to me. Well, I, I mean, just we do love it, it all the time. I mean, even here. <laughs> I mean, even just in this space, you've got you've got velvet. Oh, you, we have a fuzzy. <laughs> you have velvet. You have cotton. Yeah. Velvet and cotton. Way back there is a leather guy. Like there's. Yeah, and there's wool and there's boot clay. Yeah. And there's concrete and. I think it's a lot of fun because I think we can kind of get into a little bit of a rut just trying to pick out something and you're just kind of like, oh. Well, someone's like, I love leather. And so they pick all leather. Yeah. You're like a biker, right? You don't, it, you're, you know. Hey, but you know what? That may be your mix. I, I don't, I don't ever feel confined to have to mix things a yeah. certain way. I'm always trying to think through like what, where's the pleasure factor for you? How do you want it to feel? And what kind of textures and mix what's the mix that you want to have how much wood do you want in a room how much marble do you want how what do you want it to feel like when you're walking on the floor with your shoes on or maybe your shoes off how do you want the the curtains how does the light come through them how does it filter through do you want it soft and or do you want it heavy velvet and it to be more cozy and that mix yeah the, the mixture is an absolute essential to a room being able to come together it's it's key because without it, you might just feel a little bit one noted or you might just feel a little bit chaotic. <laughs> it's just important that you think through if you have all wood or like wood is not is only represented in one place and there's nowhere else that wood is represented, then it, you might just get a little bit tired because there's nothing, there's no cohesion to the space right. when everything is a different thing. So a lot of times like I have linen curtains that are here and then this cotton that's on the sofa actually is very similar in feel to that. And then the cushions that are on there, those have a very similar feel. Yeah. And then we'll just totally jazz it up with a velvet and then the wool. And then you see how I'm saying, like we've just kind of come up with a mix that we really like. And we're always trying to nail that with our clients and then, you know, with ourselves as well. Okay, and then the final element for today is style. And I love being able to have those conversations with my clients because for me, understanding their style and what just really jumps out to them, mm. I can't design a room unless I know what their style is. And I, I think of all the things that I get to do, that for me is probably the most fun. Do people know it? Like when you ask that question, are they immediately, can they articulate it or like? No, a lot of times it just depends. It depends on how into design they are or how a lot of times how creative they are, whether they've put any thought into why they went to J. Crew and bought a linen blazer or why they went to the Columbia store and maybe he wears these certain shirts. Like a lot of times people don't think through that stuff. They just buy what they like. And actually a lot of times it's easier when they do that because they're just buying what they like and they're not thinking about whether it's the right or wrong thing. They just pick what they like. And that sort of gut instinct a lot of times will serve you fairly well. Mm. You may not always, maybe your style won't be as developed, but your gut instinct is gonna stay your gut instinct. That's true. Most people who love to wear like a cotton shirt and jeans, like a little button down, even if they don't know how to put those things together, when you go to put them together, that's the style that they typically would want to wear. Yeah. It's same for the room. When you've typically like just gone into a store and just picked what you liked, a lot of times that's a really good way of just saying, okay, that's what they really like. Or you've pinned pictures of the same exact thing. Or you've gone, oh, CB2. Every time I go to CB2, I just find so many things I like. It's just a good clue as to what that's they true. kind of prefer. That's true, because I like pants that are like, thin like thin cut yeah but then i like something cozy and like textury and your leather boots leather boots mm -hmm. so i like a little bit of like the finer things but then i also like a, a slim proper yeah, and, and then you, i like cozy yeah you like this sort of like outdoorsy chic like... even though i'm not outdoorsy i do like that <laughs> feeling but so then when you decorate and that's how you grew up and yeah. i think that's those kind of like that's what i'm kind of looking for when i'm having these conversations with others because we're able to do it for ourselves but when we're doing it for somebody else it's like okay so where do you like to hang out what do you like to do where do you like to shop for your clothes yeah. what kind of furniture do you find yourself drawn to because that that's pretty key to being able to understand because most people's style is not one noted most people are mm. not 
all traditional. Most people will, even if they are traditional, will mix in something that's maybe transitional or they'll mix in something that's modern or they'll mix in something contemporary. And, and especially on this channel, we talk about mixing styles all the time. And yeah. that mix, finding out what that is for yourself if you're putting together your own room is absolutely fundamental. Because we can say, buy velvet. But do you know how many velvet pillows are out there? You could buy velvet from Pottery Barn. You can buy velvet yeah. from CB2. You can buy velvet from One King's Lane. And that's just a pillow. What if you think about a sectional? You want a sectional in cotton. A well, sectional from Pottery Barn is gonna look one way. A sectional from Design Within Reach is gonna look a completely mm. different way. And if you start going through all the different styles, it's like, I, I understand the purpose of the room now, but the style is where the rule, like, this is where we take the color palette and we put all these elements together to create something that just like lights you up. Yeah. And you're just like, oh. Well, and this is what I see you solving the problem because I hear all these consultations and I hear so many times, oh, but my husband doesn't share this style. He has a radically different style. It's and, pretty much always. Yeah. Or my partner <laughs> no, or my ever, whatever. Yeah. And they are so frustrated and so concerned. And what's amazing is that you put them at ease so quickly because you're able to sift through it all and realize that he's velvet and you're cotton or the other way around and you're able to to dig below these titles and, and labels. And she may want something that's a little bit ornate and he may want something clean lined. And so we're gonna we're gonna mix those things together. I think this is like a whole separate video. Oh my gosh, this is so much. Let this us know so down neat. in the comments if you would really like for us to create that video about how to design with somebody that doesn't share your same design style because I think that that really is like its own thing. But I do think it's important to identify your style and the one you're with and think about how those, what out of those things works well together and combining your styles. So yeah, yeah, we'll leave you on that fine note. We're just gonna leave you hanging. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna grab our coffee and leave you hanging. Yes. Cause that's just how we ride. <laughs> yeah. So we would love to hang out with you in other spaces. Down below in the show notes, there are so many links to places we are. There's both Instagram accounts that we have. There's also our Patreon group if you want private access to like exclusive content and all kinds of fun things we do there behind yeah. the scenes. You can sign up for our email newsletter, which we send out every week. You just go jump over to houseofvalentina.com and sign up. When you get the color palette, you can download that as well. So yes, yeah. yeah. And we're on Amazon Live as well. Oh my gosh, Amazon. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun with our Amazon Lives. A lot of you have been asking for just more of the specific items, maybe what we're wearing, what we're ordering, and we just, we've been having a it's lot so much of fun. fun. Yeah. We have so much fun on there, don't we? we? It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, so thank you so much for stopping in, and we hope you'll hit subscribe because I can't believe we're almost at 300,000 subscribers. It's so, um, so exciting it's and amazing. unbelievable and exciting, and we just love that we have this place to be able to hang out with you guys. It really is just such a pleasure. I think of so many of you, and I just hope that we, we get to do this together. It's so cool. We love reading your comments. We feel like we are, even though we're spread out all over the planet, we just love hanging out with our tribe and, yeah. our, and our family yeah. know, on YouTube. So Thank you guys so much. Cheers, you guys. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.